turn out again. Um, 28 people uh, put their names down, which is, which is excellent. Um, and John's, John's talk is, is a very, I think a very timely one, because I say we're in the UK, we're waiting news confirmation that we can start traveling again from May the 17th. We don't know exactly who's going to be on the green and the amber and the red list, but uh, I know certain people are looking forward to, to traveling. Um, I, I have a holiday book to Corfu in, uh, in June, um, whether Greece or whether Corfu is going to be on the green or amber list, we'll have to, have to wait and see. But I'll be very interested for, for John to explain the various procedures and, and indeed how, uh, how, how the various costs of the tests are, are shaping up, because I think clearly there's pressure on the government to reduce the costs. Um, but I'll be interested to hear more, more, more from John about that. Um, John's a regular feature. He, 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 he comes on most of our talks these days, so I think everyone will recognise Don. John. Um, Donna Robinson is also joining us, and she's joining us from, from Bangkok. Um, it's very good to have Donna with us, partic particularly what the current situation is in, in, in Thailand, to get some direct feedback. I always find first-hand feedback is exactly what we want, um, to hear how things, thing, things are going, because that's come as a bit of a surprise to everybody, but I'll leave Donna to say a few more words about that. So for now, let me just thank both Donna and John for joining us today and everybody else. And we'll hear from both of them. Probably the two talks will last in the region of 40, 45 minutes, something like that. And we'll have the usual 15 minutes at the end for, uh, for Q&A. So put some questions down so we can go cover that later. On that note, John, I'll mute myself, pass the screen over to you. Thanks very much, John, please go ahead. Right, it has that projected? Yes, it has. And can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Right, um, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman and the anglo -Thai Society for asking me and Donna to just give an update on traveling to the land of smiles and, and back, hopefully. Um, I'll start with my next slide, just to say that a, a declaration of conflict of interest, I have none. And um, I'll start with the conclusion actually, and I'm borrowing uh, from a, a well-known um, Latin uh, saying, a buyer beware or caveat emptor. Now, any scholars among you, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. I've paraphrased it as travelers beware. Viatores cavet. Um, you might be surprised as to why I got involved as a hematologist in this um, arena of travel uh, um, to Thailand and back, but I was inspired by um, Pison Tees, who are a previous presenter here, um, daughter who had to travel back to Thailand and by this interesting um, announcement about just over a year ago uh, about the, the announcement of the requirement for fit to fly uh, for anyone going back to Thailand and this was a, a Twitter uh, photograph of the, the crowds uh, outside the embassy uh, of people applying for the fit to fly uh, letters. And I was actually invited to come and help provide the um, fit to fly certificate, but I was unable to as I was shielded at the time. Um, I got most of my information from the following sources from the Thai Airways, which I found quite useful, the Thai Embassy um, website and the there's both English and Thai versions, and I'll make some comments about that later. And there's also the Thai Embassy Facebook um, page. So I'll start off, if I may, uh, um, possibly a more simple one for Thai nationals. So for a Thai nationals, you need um, six, if you like, um, steps. Uh, apply for a certificate of entry decide whether you want to go 
with the state quarantine or if you wanted to you can book the alternative state quarantine as well now uh, I'll talk a little bit more about that later and perhaps Donna you might be able to tell us a bit more about with the um, this alternative state quarantine alternatives um, currently uh, the Thai embassy website says for Thais it's I'm translating it now as recommend a COVID PCR test. Um, in Thai, it says Kho Nat Nam. And below, just to show that it, this is rather UK specific, um, there's a, a Thai, no, oops, sorry. I'll go back if I can. I can't. Here we go. Um, in, this is taken from the Thai embassy website in Finland, but I'll translate that. It says Thai nationality do not need a fit to fly or a COVID test. So it shows that this recommendation appears to be UK specific for Thais. And it says recommend. Um, the other film that a tie will require is this T8 form. Um, and then to download a Thailand Plus application, as well as uh, filling in a UK currently anyway, until we, op until we open up um, on the 17th of May, I believe, um, UK international declaration form, because at the moment you're not allowed to travel. This is a quick example of what a certificate entry looks like. And this is a quick view of what a T8 form looks like. Um, this is the U current UK international declaration form, which you can uh, get from the uh, web website, UKGov. And this is the sort of things you need to fill in. Um, in particular, why you're going, work, volunteering, education, medical, funeral, ending, temporary visit, uh, if you're a non-UK resident. So that's for the Thai, a little bit, fairly simple. Um, for non-Thai national, um, you need a visa and I won't, talk about the visa at all because it's quite complicated. Um, you still need a certificate of entry. Uh, you do need an additional form called a Thai declaration form. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, and for non-Thai national, you do need a COVID test. Um, and it specifically says it has to be a laboratory test using the PCR method 72 hours before departure. This is the Thai declaration form. And what I thought was unusual about it, now I think is the next page. I've highlighted one of it where it says, you have to present a fit to fly. So, I'm trying to fathom that out as to, it may be just a remnant that hasn't been removed yet. Um, the Thai declaration form also, I'll just point out, uh, is a tracking system. So you can be tracked and then you agree to wear face mask, wash hands and at least only one meter apart. So you can get closer in Thailand. The other things that you will need as a non-Thai national is this copy of uh, insurance um, to cover COVID, which you need to print. Um, you need to have your ASQ hotel booking for Thai national. You need the same T8 form. You need the same Thailand Plus uh, app. And you also need your UK international travel declaration form currently. 
So nine steps. Um, this is from the Thai Embassy website, which if you get, go to, you see that they have an, a section about the insurance and there's an, a section here about where you can buy the insurance. You just click on there. But, and this is what you get. And it's delivered by a number of uh, insurance uh, agencies. Uh, there are, however, websites I found, for example, from Skyscanner, which do provide travel, uh, COVID travel protection. Uh, and on a, a, I think, two week trip, I did a check here on myself. It was 106 pounds. Just give the, actually, no, so it was a month trip to Thailand using my age and my medical condition. So everybody will be diff slightly different. Um, and it does appear to cover adequately. Uh, for example, the medical expenses up to 5 million. This is an example of the Thailand Plus app that you need to download. And you can see enable GPS so that you can be traced. And I think this is a sort of graphical summary of the steps a non-Thai need to apply to, to travel. You might think that that's quite complicated, but not as complicated as it was this time last year when it was 31 steps. From April this, well, we're just beginning of this month. Um, you, when you get to Thailand, uh, everybody needs, will be subject to quarantine of at least uh, 14 days. Um, but you could be considered for reduction in number of quarantine days to less than that. Um, what you need, but because you're if you're coming from the UK, it is a minimum of 10 to 11 days. Whereas if you're coming from elsewhere, you might be less. But what is needed to qualify for this reduction in quarantine is a certified proof of vaccination. Now, this is uh, from the Thai embassy website. So it says here, certified proof of vaccination. Um, and the document should show that, that number of doses, date of vaccination, the type and the batch number. And by submitting that, you would then be given the uh, number of nights to be quarantined on your certificate of, ed of entry. If you're traveling with family, I've made a little note down here. For example, if you have a little child who's not been vaccinated, you won't be qualified for a reduction in the quarantine. And these are the current approved vaccines by the Thai uh, government. So not a real problem here. And then you book your ASQ hotels from which you can uh, these are the sites, again, obtained from the Thai embassy website where you can book your ASQs, hotels. When I last looked at it, there were um, 22 SQ um, hotels, 11 Pattaya, 10 in Bangkok, but this is probably a lot more now. That's the state quarantine. And there's a lot more for the um, alternatives for ASQ, alternative state quarantine. So that's simple enough, I hope, um, for people to understand. But there are sort of challenges. Um, and the challenges present themselves at each stage of your journey to Thailand. Um, 
the passenger has a challenge, the COVID test provider, there's a challenge, the travel agent, the airline, and even the official sources. The first challenge has been simplified somewhat um, because the fit to fly certificate is no longer required, which has, has led to a great reduction in confusion. So all you need is to arrange your COVID test if you need to. And if you could do a Google search, you see there are several um, providers of COVID test. And you see that, now this is a Heathrow test, um, which appears to be quite um, cost friendly. Uh, the PCR test is 99 pounds. Um, in terminal lamp is 85 pounds. Um, the antigen test is 59 pounds. So that's the um, choosing the right test, if you like, is, is another issue. You will remember, and I'll take back, the Thai government would like a uh, COVID PCR test. There are also challenges um, because of everything moving so quickly uh, that some agency may not even be up to date. I was contacted by Waxers back in March, no, in November, sorry, last year to say they're advertising um, a good deal with confirmed testing to do the COVID test. And I recognized at the time that um, the COVID test that they're advertising was uh, what I thought was home testing uh, kit, which was not accepted by Emirates and sometimes were traveling back to Thailand via Dubai. And on the Emirates website, you see here that home testing kits are not accepted. Down here. So even the um, travel agents may not have got it quite right. But I subsequently found that the home testing kit is not the same as home sampling. Um, home testing kit is defined as where you take the sample yourself, test it yourself, and then read the results yourself. Um, a bit like, you know, the, the um, test you might have got recently, um, or you'd be able to pick up. Um, what I'm, I'm more concerned about is this home sampling ability, because I think it depends on your motivation. If you're planning to travel abroad, your motivation is to get a negative result. And if you're doing the test at home, who's there to make sure that you produce the, or you uh, test it adequately and pass the um, swab adequately enough, even in the right orifice? Uh, Professor Jonathan Deeks actually in the, you may remember a little while ago, there was a high, um, this should be Liverpool, sorry, um, instance in Liverpool, and they wanted to test the lateral flow antigen test. And they showed that basically the more experienced the person you are doing the test, the better the result. So I have some concern about that. And then there's challenges about the airlines. Currently, these are the airlines that have been um, uh, given permission, if you like, to give them, give them permits to carry passengers to, to Thailand. Um, anyone going to Phuket? Emirates and Qatar are the only one allowed to go directly there at the moment. But there will be more, I'm sure. However, even the airline staff and can't keep up to date. This lady uh, phoned me at about 5 p.m. on a Sunday evening. Last year, if you remember, Thai Airways were leaving on Sunday evening. No, this was Emirates, sorry. They, they were leaving in, in the late 
um, afternoon, early evening. And she was traveling, uh, Kun Kay was co coming from Jersey. She had to come to London. And from London, she was going to Dubai and from Dubai to Bangkok. And she phoned me in tears saying that the staff at the Emirates check-in desk won't allow her to board because she didn't have a COVID test. What the staff didn't know at the time was that a Thai passenger traveling through Dubai at the time didn't need a COVID test. All she needed was a fit to fly. And despite them checking back to Bangkok, they wouldn't initially allow her to board. So I sort of quickly uh, copied and pasted the um, current or the Emirates uh, guideline at the time to her line, and they eventually let her through. So I think the point of this was just to say that even the staff at the airport may not be aware of the current rules because it's changing so rapidly. Um, you may remember that uh, I mentioned in order to enter Thailand, there are official um, guidelines. And I'll just show you three guidelines. This is from entry to Thailand, which is um, from the Thai um, Tourist Authority of Thailand. And what I've said here, what I found here was that anyone from the departing countries, what they, what's needed is the, um, a COVID document issued by the government from the departing um, air, uh, country, certifying that that person has been vaccinated. Note here, it's just a documentation issued by the government. And in Thai, I think this says, so that's the Thai um, uh, tourist authority. This is from the Thai embassy. If you remember, I said what they say there is a certified proof of vaccination. To me, that means you have to have a vaccination certificate certified by somebody. For example, your GP, it doesn't say or a notary public even, who will charge you for that. So in Thai, I've translated it as Lak Tan Gan Chit Vaccine. And finally, um, this is from the Thai Embassy Facebook page. Um, sorry, this Thai Embassy um, website, but in Thai. So for Thais, apparently, what's needed is a proof of vaccination. And I've translated that Thai, Sadang Lak Tan Gan Chit Vaccine. So set similar things, but slightly different emphasis. Um, we were talking earlier about Phuket's sandbox plan to open up on July the 1st, and I've gathered that still in. Uh, on track, um, provided that uh, I think they said 70% of uh, Phuket has been vaccinated. And the plan is to open up on the 1st of July and then open up to other tourist um, destinations. Um, and finally to open for tourist business by October. So we'll watch this space because currently, um, I'm sure you're all aware there's a, a third wave in, in Thailand, in Bangkok, and this is a, a screenshot of the um, most recent uh, uh, Bangkok Post um, pages. It's all about COVID. Um, and it, it is going to, to pay a bit of a havoc on uh, the goals um, and economy for Thailand. Um, this is the, the, the vaccination timeline, which they hope to uh, uh, progress in, in time. 
um, but there are calls for lockdown by um, the citizens. Um, on the 1st of May, so next week coming up, um, there is this um, app that everybody can log into to register for uh, vaccination. And the first phase has been done, that's medical personnel and public health personnel. And then the next uh, phase will be for these some more senior citizens or those with these chronic disease. So the, the government program for vaccination is, has started and is progressing. Um, and find the third phase will be in August for the general population. So I think that was my uh, conclusion is that because of the ever-changing situation, travelers do take care and take care of um, all the guidance and advice you get. And I think perhaps the best thing to do is whenever you travel, print out the current regulations and take it with you to the airport so that any hiccups can be uh, evidenced. So, so thank you. I think that's, uh, I won't be able to cover everything, but that's a, a rough um, uh, guideline on travel. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll hand over to Donna. Hi there. Can you hear me? I'll share my... my presentation. Um, just trying to share my presentation now. Can you see my presentation? It's not showing up yet, John. Oh. No. Okay. What's the presentation? Mm. Yeah. Can you hear me? Just yes. nod. Yes. We can hear you and we can see the uh, okay. presentation Thank now. You. Thanks, Donna. So I guess I can see you mainly in the UK and um, you know, I can give you, I don't know whether you've been back to Thailand, many of the group in that time, but we do see a lot of people in my clinic who travel. John, um, first of all, put me in touch with the Fit to Fly on March last year. Um, and I didn't realize, John, what a huge um, operation this would be, that we'd have people working 24-7 in my clinic and elsewhere, helping people with fit to flies. And as John says, the rules change every day. Different countries have different regulations for coming to Thailand. Um, and basically, we face with COVID last March last year in Bangkok and we had a lockdown then and from May onwards last year until December we had normal lives living here because there was no COVID in Thailand um, and there was a small outbreak, there was an outbreak started in December with some Sakon and then Christmas came and after Christmas there was, there was a few more cases um, in a shrimp again and it seemed to have disappeared. Um, you know, we, we never even thought about it except the country has no tourists and the only hotels that operate are those operating as ASQs. 
and then in some Quran, in the in the bars in Akamai, Sukhumvit six three and Tangla six Sukhumvit fifty five. But again, we weren't sure because we wondered if it was coming up because none of us have been affected by COVID until now. Um, but then anyhow, these musicians, bars in Akamai, and then a lot of people flew to Phuket, the same group of musicians, where there was an outbreak. And then coming back in Songkran, we started to hear more and more about COVID in central Bangkok that we haven't really faced before. Um, so we're kind of in a bit of chaos at the moment. And it is frightening because a lot of us haven't really seen COVID before, or, you know, we, we have heard of it and we've known one or two people, but it's not usually in our everyday life. And now we're hearing of cases. And in Thailand too, um, the, the regulations are changing. So I was saying to Steve, if there was one positive COVID test, and you've probably got hundreds or have thousands in the towns where you're living, but if there was one positive case reported in a state quarantine in December or January, this lady who'd flown from Switzerland was then immediately shipped off to a hospital that she didn't feel very comfortable at, but we got a then sent to another hospital, Sukhumvit Hospital, that's more international. So um, the country could do that because if you're facing 40 cases in an outbreak, everybody needs to be monitored and to track the spread too. Um, so what does my clinic do? We're seeing a lot of people who are traveling uh, first of all, the fit to flies that John helped us with. A lot of people, John, would get through this paperwork. It wasn't, it sounds daunting, but they did it. And um, there's lot, there was insurance, COVID insurance being advertised, lots of Facebook groups like John telling you around the clock what to do. So it wasn't actually so difficult and a lot of people wanted to escape UK and wanted to come to Thailand. So when Thailand opened up about November, we did start to do a massive, a lot of these fit to flies, thanks to John, um, to charge a minimal amount for people to be have a video call and be told they could fly back safely, have a certificate to fly into Thailand. Um, and the UK was very good. Certainly we know, as John knows, some of the other countries um, wanted slightly different um, documents being sent. So, um, and then this year what's happened is there's no, so a lot of people would come to Thailand, even do the two weeks, the non-Thais, the Thais would do it in the um, state quarantine, the non-Thais in the, all Thais that wanted to pay for it, um, for their own hotel, would do it in the assigned state quarantine. So people were quite happy to do the 14 days, in fact, because then when you get out, you could have quite a normal life in the sun or the beach. Um, but now what's so then we're also seeing a lot of people who came here in november many thai people to visit their families and foreigners with relatives here or people coming back to thailand um, or people working between the two countries and then these people after a month or so want to return back to uk or other countries so then since um January onwards, we've been seeing a lot of people who are returning to UK and they need to have this COVID um, PCR test. I can show you. This is one of them. It's a, a mouth swab and a nasal swab. And 
again, John would ask me about the laboratories here. Well, for people going to the airports, we want the test to go to the best laboratories in Thailand. Bangkok Hospital and Health Lab, Bria is another top lab, because they've got so many certifications on. And there's a lot of regulations, even for us to do the test, how it's collected, how to go to the lab. If someone comes in in the morning, they get the result that evening and it is emailed to them with original. We really are handling a lot of tests now. So we don't want um, people coming in to collect documents. Um, a printer, a telephone document is fine. Um, so we're doing a lot of these tests. We actually have kept our little bubble of a clinic COVID free because the people who are flying, they really don't want to get COVID and they've isolated themselves for often seven days because they've got their ticket. Then they want to fly back to their home country. A lot of Thai people flying back to UK. And actually I am surprised how many Thai people live all over the world and in UK? Um, and it's made me feel they go through the same things as we do as Farangs in Bangkok, um, as Thais in UK. Now, since um, February, there was another test which is quicker and was adopted by um, Denmark was one of the first countries that would say you could have the antigen test for travel. So we got the test and it's similar to the, um, it's similar to the COVID PCR test, RT-PCR, but it's just a nasopharyngeal swab. And again, we were sending it to Bangkok Hospital Lab. Um, and people call it the rapid test. It can be available actually even in one hour or six hours. But because the laboratory is so certified, they do one run, then another run of tests. Um, but this has certainly been asked for now by um, the USA, Germany, Holland, and Denmark. And I think UK may allow this. It's a cheaper test here. It's um, half the price of a COVID PCR. Um, and um, what else? Well, I mean, since the outbreak in Bangkok, we We've been urged to report people positive cases, three or four, that were outside our clinic where a nurse would visit them with full PPE in their condominium. And here places are reported. Um, so we've told people, you know, are you thinking what you should do if you actually are positive? Um, will you go to hospital? We've got to have a designated private hospital for foreigners and they're using med park the new hospital that's um has over 250 icu beds reported positive two weeks ago we had a couple of people and um they contacted the hospital and then I think there's several apps that you can monitor yourself at home now. Um, we can also do this rapid antigen test in the clinic now, here it is. Um, but again, you have to report if there's a positive test. I don't think anything's really gonna happen, but I think the government just wants you to try to do the right thing. And, um, and be aware too, because as a small clinic, we really don't want to be faced with positive cases. We, that's for the really the hospitals. We've reported one or two cases at the beginning of April, um, as we were told we had to. We're still doing some antibody tests, where are they? But this isn't a very good test where, um, People would want to do the test like a pinprick, 
but really I've seen very few positives, although it could be allowed after 10 days to do this pinprick test. Um, but so far, as we say, we don't even see positives. So is it a good test? Probably not. Okay. Um, what else? Um, what's it like in Bangkok right now? Um, it is like a semi-lockdown. Um, the most bars that sell alcohol, I don't, bars can't be open to sell alcohol, so they're closed. Um, there's one or two restaurants open, but they can't sell alcohol. Um, Massage parlors probably are closed. Hairdressers and beauty salons. Hairdressers may stay open, but um, clinics that do cosmetic work or close anywhere that you have close contact with people, you you know they have to be closed. Um, so we just hope the numbers will drop again. And the vaccination is the disappointing area for Thailand, where you've got such a great public health system. And they do tell us what to do on apps and um, announcements. Um, and yet the vaccine rollout is slow. Um, and foreigners here are going back often to their own countries to have vaccinations. But I think the embassies, all the different embassies in Bangkok are bringing the vaccines in for their own staff. I guess they can bring it in themselves. But the other foreigners living here are a bit concerned now about their safety. Okay, I think that's enough for me. I'm going to um, go on to mute. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you very much, Donna. Uh, th thank you. That, that, that was a very, very good roundup. Uh, and to John, I mean, I think it's uh, just just running through your presentation, John. Um, <coughs> you can see how, how things have evolved. But I mean, it's uh, what, what what is what is what is clearly needed is is a, a clear process that uh, everybody understands because otherwise the, the room for confusion is 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 is, is great. Um, and hopefully that will become clearer. And particularly in the UK, as, as we're nearing May the 17th, as long as we stick to that particular date, clearly people need to know what is required or there's going to be on, on the certification side, because otherwise there's going to be a lot of disappointed people turning up at the airport and all sorts of issues get going on. So hopefully that will become clearer as we go along. But thank you both for, for, for your two presentations. Um, I'll, I'll come back in later. But... If anyone else has got questions, I'm sure there are a number of questions on, on, on the finer points of the procedure. Um, Andrew, can you see any questions that are in the pipeline already? I've got nobody waving yet, but if, um, if anybody does have a question, use yes. the wave function and we'll, we'll pick we'll you pick up, up as, we, as, 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 we, as we go along. I know that before we move to questions, John actually wanted to share a couple more um, slides um, with a couple of traveling tips. Is that right, John? Um, yes, if I may. I, yeah, please, please go ahead, John. I, I found this, um, uh, right, let me just share screen. Can you see that now? Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As Donna was saying that on, on the return to the UK, um, there are also steps to take. And one of which is to um, ha have a COVID test before you come back. So um, you need to go onto the UK Gov website and look through the information. Uh, basically, what governs what you need to do is depending on whether you're coming directly from Bangkok or whether you're transiting through any um, centers that are on the red list. Um, but what anyone coming back now needs to get a COVID test and it's three days before you travel. So Donna can offer that service. Um, you also need to book and pay for a travel package. Um, which you include 
two COVID tests on day two and day eight of your uh, quarantine when you come back to the UK. Um, currently from Thailand, you need to uh, quarantine for 10 days at your uh, declared address. So two tests, day two, day eight, when you come back from Thailand. Some, I think Donna mentioned, there are some people who don't need to have these um, quarantine, and these are some of the um, exempt uh, jobs. And the, the thing I'd like to reiterate to uh, Donna's point is that um, on the way back from abroad to the UK, you can have the COVID test either by the PCR test or the antigen test, such as the lateral flow. And my travel tip, if you like, is that it's possible if you wanted to, before you leave UK, and this is only one example, so I'm, I haven't checked whether there's any others, you can go on to Cured website and book a pre-departure rapid test for only £39. This will then be delivered to your UK address before you travel and you take it back abroad or you take it abroad with you. And when you're due to come back, you schedule your video call back to Cured so that they can see you taking the swab and showing the test, following which they will issue your certificate by email. So you, that is the convenience of doing it in your hotel room, for example, uh, rather than having to go and uh, find a clinic, especially if you're uh, perhaps in the provinces. So that, that was my, my, my travel tip to, to uh, uh, wow. be, to prepare. Thank you. Really useful. Thank, thank you, thank you, John. Uh, I mean, what, what, one general point. I mean, clearly people are concerned about is 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 forged documents. I mean, because basically, once the system comes into play, um, and I think the British government is working on some form of vaccination passport um, to come in by May the seventeenth but how that's going to incorporate the various tests that have to be taken in conjunction with that. Um, has there been concern about the, 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 the level of forgery that could take place in, in the system? You're, you're on mute, John. Sorry. Oh, I'm sure there is. And I'm not sure the, you see that the um, onus is going to be on airport check-in staff to, to verify this. And I'm not sure how that's going to work. No, and, and I think also with various airlines who are, who are conversant with this. I mean, as you say, for example, as far as Thailand's concerned, um, the airlines who are currently doing it, airlines like Emirates, for example, and Qatar Airlines, who, who will be familiar with, 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 with the procedure. Um, but clearly, I, I think it would be or very not. wise for any, anybody traveling to, to yeah. contact their airline before they go to the airport. They don't want to find out they have a problem once they actually arrive at the airport. Yeah. Try, try, try and deal with that in advance. Yes, but even as I said, that example, the um, no, exactly. check-in check -in staff at the time wasn't even aware of that. So, um, as I said, travelers beware when you travel, just take everything, um, documentation with you. I mean, it, it would, I don't know whether this has been thought, but whether- um, Steve. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, sorry. I was just Steve, to um, just to say the- thought... Go ahead. Yeah, the forgery issue. In the past, when I worked closely <coughs> with John, every fit to fly would have had a video call and a receipt, so that actually paid 400 baht. So you knew they were, um, they had a lot of documents to show. But I'm just wondering, yeah, so it seemed to prevent forgery. I mean, I, I think every, everyone will be trying to prevent this because if, if the, yeah. the credibility of the system is, 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 is yeah. not there, um, then, then people won't, won't have any confidence in it. Mm -hmm. But it, it may be, I mean, if airlines, I don't know whether they already do this, John, but whether they, they issue passengers with a checklist so, so you can actually tick off 
what you're supposed to have when you get to the airport, mm -hmm. as opposed to get there and find out you're missing a particular document or a particular test or whatever. I'm not sure whether that's already in place. Certainly on the um, Thai Airways website, there was a checklist. Mm. Um, even despite that, there were passengers turning up at the airport with missing documents. And I said the, the initial confusion was uh, the difference between a fit to fly versus yes. the um, yes. COVID test. And there yes. were even then um, uh, copied or rather, yes, there were copied uh, letters of fit to fly. So fraud, fraud, forgery was also evident even then. And I, and I think equally with some of the providers, I mean, how do you know that a PCR provider is a is, is a genuine provider in the sense that it will be accepted by everybody? Because clearly there is a bit large differential in the costs. I mean, I, I've been quoted for PCR tests as much as um, three to four hundred pounds a test if I want it done quickly. Um, and now the average seems to be more like 120 pound a test. But I think the government is, is very keen to to drive that price down. And I think it's in the process of doing that. And hopefully it, it will actually have a list of approved providers because I think that makes it much easier for passengers to stop people just going to the cheapest provider and then finding out perhaps that, 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 that does, that's not accepted when you get to the airport. Mm. But that's, that's difficult for um, accepted providers abroad. It, indeed, I mean, indeed. I mean, you can see it, the, the pitfalls that are here. I mean, I think, uh, just that people are, I mean, a, a confident about traveling in the first place, but equally um, that the, 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 what they have with them is, is, is gonna be able to carry weight both in the UK and, and, and at their destination. Yes. That's why we tend to use um, a certified laboratory out here for anybody traveling, because Bangkok Hospital Laboratory and Bria have every possible record if you needed to go back, I wouldn't just do a swab. No. You know, I think they really need that level of documentation. Ab ab absolutely, absolutely, Dorothy. I think people just gotta have confidence in the system. Once the confidence is there, then, it, then, then it's fine. Andrew, I think I saw Tim asking a question. Is, is, that, is that right? Um, Greg Watkins. Oh, Greg, Greg indeed. Greg, please, please go ahead. You'll need to unmute, Greg. Oh, well, Fantastic, thanks. Um, just just a, a practical tip on coming into Thailand from Graham McDonald, who was the first Brit back into Thailand from the UK on the 16th of June. And um, he basically said, take five copies of everything. I mean, he, 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 had, he had more than one stop to get back. He actually had a full start. He made it to Frankfurt on one attempt and they, they took one look at him and said, we don't want you in the country and sent him back to UK. Um, but when he eventually got in, what he said was the bureaucrats at different stages wanted different pieces of paper and wanted copies. And um, they wanted copies in all sorts of places where you could never find a photocopier. So, so that would be my best advice. Maybe a direct flight, you could get away with three copies of everything. Yes. Um, and of course, have every single document loaded onto your phone, whether it's a PDF or whatever, um, just so that you have a backup if goes missing or whatever. Um, I, I think about the vaccine rollout is, is really the biggest concern of, of, of anyone living here. And we, we had a presentation from HSBC yesterday on, on Thailand's position. And with the current pace of rollout, Thailand would achieve herd immunity in about 2030. Um, so Thailand needs to put their foot on the accelerator um, and I think that's recognised in government. The, the difficulty, of course, is, you know, the developed countries have, have kept all the, uh, the obvious vaccines at the moment. So availability is a little bit tough for, for countries like Thailand. But even so, um, I think we have, we have four that have gone through FDA approval and there's another three or four lined up. So we expect the pace to quicken. Hopefully it won't be as late as August before we can plug into vaccines. I'm told the international hospitals have to procure from the Thai government. They cannot procure direct from the vaccine suppliers. And that's, that's to do with ensuring the safety of the vaccine, but also 
um, fair pricing, which I, which I think you know might be a good idea. Donna, Donna always sets the fairest prices in Bangkok anyway, so she's always fantastic. <laughs> Greg, is, is, is AstraZeneca local production, is that starting in June? Is that, is that the plan where, where, where the lo locally produced uh, um, quantities of AstraZeneca in Thailand will be available? I'm told it's on schedule, Steve, but I couldn't possibly tell you who told no. me that. Anyways, I might have to go and shoot myself. Because it, 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 it's interesting. I mean, in, in Europe, there's been a lot of flack about AstraZeneca. I'm sure, sure everyone on this call is, is aware of that. Um, Hopefully that doesn't apply to AstraZeneca locally in Thailand, the same, the same sort of credibility. I, in fact, I, I, I did hear that with Sinovac, there's some concern that people would prefer to have a, a non-Sinovac um, vaccination. Have you, have you picked up anything, anything like that locally? Well, let's put it like this. I, I won't be joining a queue for Sinovac or Sputnik um, from, from Russia. Um, and I suspect the queues for those vaccines might actually be shorter than anticipated. Yeah. Um, the difficulty is Johnson & Johnson is the only one that's gone through FDA approval at the moment. So, so Pfizer and um, Moderna haven't actually gone through yet. Yes, yeah. okay. Um, and I don't even know if their documents are in approval. I think Thailand plans to buy them, don't they, Donna? Yeah, yeah. And there's another company we were approached by, Bionet Asia, a French Thai company that was, they planned on producing vaccines by June, but everything, we just, I, I work at Bamran Brand and I ask to the top doctors every week, vaccines, they just say, we can't tell you. Mm. Which is really disappointing when you've got top public health people in this country. Um, yeah, we feel vulnerable. Mm -hmm. There's so much stress, isn't there, at the moment, with the yeah. new wave of COVID yeah. and, no, yes, and very few vaccines. vaccines. Yeah, it's not just families, it's employees as well. I'm now in my office where, where I have two of, two of nine staff in and the rest are working from home, which is, which is cool. But there, there is, you know, we're a gregarious species. We, we, do, we do bounce ideas off each other, we engage with each other. So it's... And I know UK has had, a, had an awful experience over the last six to eight months. Um, I, I sincerely hope we can get through this, this third wave in reasonable time. I sense we should have, we should have done this two or three weeks ago, cancelled Songkran, just locked down, and we might be on the other side of it now. But um, there may be other reasons why that didn't happen. I know. I, I think we had a similar issue in the yeah. UK with, with yeah. I think know, what strikes over, over Christmas was was a was was a, was an issue. Um, um, I think what what has been uh, very reassuring is when the vaccination program does get out and once it's it's in into the community, you can see the results. And I think that's where the UK has gone from being in quite a uh, a challenging position to actually in a much much more reassuring one. But it does demonstrate that you need to see that across the board. I mean, that, that's really the, the key to this. I think, I think you said on a call um, several months ago, Greg, that the, that the, the key really um, is, is, is having a vaccination program in, in all countries, because then, then everyone is reassured and has is, 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 is got the confidence back to start traveling again. At the moment, um, and, and what we are seeing on our screens is what's going on in India at the moment. And that, that, that's the worrying thing, that uh, it can go from seeming to be under control to out of control in a, in a very short period of time. And that, that's really where people are, uh, the human nature kicks in and you, and you do get very worried about the situation. I think the issue here, David... I've uh, got sorry, one. Issue. Yeah, can I just... Can I, yeah, just can I, I, posted, I think the British ambassador said there were 63 million vaccines procured. I think there are actually more than that, but a population of 67 million we don't have what's what's the mass we don't 100 i'm not aware that we have procurement for 134 million shots i mean i know johnson johnson is only a single shot but i think that's something that hsbc brought up yesterday many countries around the world now have procured sufficient 
to vaccine their whole vaccinate their whole population. I am not someone correct me on the call if I'm wrong, but I don't think uh, Thailand has yet reached the stage where they have procured sufficient vaccines for the whole mm. population. Steve, we have three more questions. Yep, please. You, Next you, one you, from Graham, Graham Rawlings, Rawlinson. You there? Uh, thank you. Uh, I was curious, it may be one of the two doctors that uh, are with us today that can assist me. What is the cost of the vaccine in Thailand to a Thai person? And that's generally speaking, and as free. A, and okay, it's it's a free vaccine. Free. Ah, uh, okay. And my understanding is that they don't. Are they able to choose which vaccine they want? No. No, it's the sign of that in the government hospital. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you for that. I wasn't sure. Um, as a general comment to many of those listening uh, today, I, I was very interested in the uh, uh, Dr. Luckett's presentation because in the run up to Christmas, I was trying to look at the logistics of uh, getting a vaccination, a quarantine hotel and a fit to fly certificate and trying to work out the timings of when to get my COVID test. And then, for, and then within 48 hours, I had to be able to present it at immigration. And somewhere in there, I had to get a fit to fly certificate, which my GP doesn't do anymore. And all GPs in my area refused to do. However, there was somebody in Yorkshire that would do one by return of post if I sent him a copy of my visa. Um, when I then uh, put that to the, into the mix of the quarantine requirements, which flexed from you can walk around the hotel, uh, it then became you can leave your room after the fifth day. Then it changed to you must stay in your room for the 10 days. I basically gave up. I was not prepared to turn up at Heathrow and gamble on what immigration, what the check-in desk would allow, and then try to explain after an overnight flight that my uh, COVID test hadn't expired. It was within the time limit when I took off, even though it might now be outside the time limit. Now I've arrived at immigration in Bangkok. When I took all of that into consideration, I think I may not be alone in thinking, I'll wait. That's just a general comment. Thank you for your Thank you, Graham. Time. Who's next to the queue, Andrew? Peter Bradley. Peter. Hello. Hi, Steve, Thank, and thanks very much for the presentations. Um, you know, it's just it's such dreadful news um, of, of the way that the that COVID positive numbers are increasing in Thailand and is, is as Steve said, hopefully we don't go down the same route as what's happening in India. But my question is, is that if the COVID positive numbers do continue to increase, what is the likelihood that Thai private hospitals will have to take patients from the overwhelmed government hospitals due to not sufficient ventilators, for example? Are you in Bangkok? No, no, I, I'm, in, I'm in London, but the presentation I've heard gives me great concerns about even trying to come to Thailand, to be honest. It sounds, um, it sounds a, a, an incredible uh, feat to try to achieve, and there's so many blocks in the way. But my worry is, is that if people were to come to Thailand and the numbers have increased, well, how can you access hospitals if hospitals then have to private hospitals have to support government hospitals? I think they would if they had to, and they've built field hospitals up in Chiang Mai. Um, there's a lot of in Bangkok, certainly, and in the major hospitals. 
those. Um, and most people coming here went on to Facebook, not, not impossible. I'm sorry, I, I'm not picking up um, every word that, that you're saying. That probably doesn't answer your question. No, no, no. no. My, my, my concern is, is that <laughs> if, if my, my concern is, is that if Thailand's going to be struggling um, to roll out vaccines, if numbers increase, if we see in Thailand what we've seen in the UK over this last 12 months, it's going to be very devastating. And I think morally, I think we all have to think very, very carefully about travelling to Thailand to protect Thai nationals at the same time. And as a charity, we work with the poorest of people. And my concern is also very much for the poorer communities. So ensuring that as many Thai nationals... So far, the house... Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So far in Bangkok, the private hospitals, um, well, we've heard Med Park has beds still available, but it's expensive. That's the new hospital. And most of people are avoiding going near hospitals anyhow, because they're too frightened to go unless they have COVID. Okay, th thank you. Thank you. Mike Leduc and then David Fall. Okay, lovely. Uh, <clears throat> hi, good morning. Thank you very much. Um, I'm just wondering, a lot of the talk so far about rules and regulations have involved hotels. What's the situation if you just want to go to a village and stay in a house? I mean, do the same rules apply? Do you still have to go to a hotel and, and quarantine and that sort of stuff? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, well, once, you, <laughs> once, once you enter the country, if you've got the COVID vaccine, you stay in a, um, a designated hotel called an ASQ for seven days. If you don't, yeah. Yeah. it doesn't matter wherever you go to yeah. in the whole of the country or 14 days in a hotel. Right. You can't, you can't and, bypass the hotels, Mike. You, you have to go through the hotel process. No. If, if you come out of that clear, then you can go on to the village or wherever you're going, but you can't bypass the, the hotel process in the, in the initial stage. Okay. Okay. I think I understand. No, that's fine. Thank you very much. It's just, Thanks. yeah, I just didn't get that. Uh, point. Thank you a lot. Thanks, Mike. Mike there, is, there is one other thing to watch out for. If we go into a full lockdown, as we had last year, there was a block on travel between certain provinces. Mm. Uh, so that's something to keep uh, a watch on yeah. as this situation yeah. develops for the world. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Rick. And, 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 what, and, and, what, and what about traveling? I mean, uh, uh, you know, do you, can you travel by car, uh, by private car, and this sort of thing? Uh, foreigners, can they? they uh, is, is, is that permitted? Yeah, uh, you can. Yeah. You can, but many people are saying, well, I'll just get an antigen test anyhow if I go to Ko Chang, or if um, it is required for Krabi and Phuket. To have a document to have a test before you travel and now yeah. anyhow the government would rather that most of us stay in our place yes. till the current outbreaks under control yeah. Yeah. okay thank you very much indeed thank you thank, thank you mike you. david you've got a question david you need to unmute you may be on mute david i thought probably not oh uh, how's there that we yes we've got you Sorry, a logical obs obsolescence. Um, John and Donna, many thanks for your very helpful presentations. Oh, your marketing, it's all very complicated just for one country. Um, I wonder if either of you, I have two questions. The first one is, I wonder if either of you have any idea of what the situation is like in neighbouring countries, for instance, including Laos. Uh. And, and Vietnam. Second question, maybe for Donna, is what variants are appear of the virus are appearing in Thailand? Over to Donna. I don't know. I'm. I'm not clear. They thought they had the UK variant, didn't they? At one they point. Yes. In terms of neighbouring countries. 
All I can say is one person who, we're getting people coming back from Myanmar to here and coming out of quarantine. And they're in a state of shock because they say it's like a war zone. Just forget about COVID, they say. They are really traumatized. Um, and the other countries, David, I haven't been out of Sukhumvit Road for the past year. My life is just, you know, we're all frightened to travel. Um, so I can't comment on the neighboring countries. We, certainly I've heard of UK variants appearing in, the, in Thailand. I don't know about the numbers, but I was quite surprised as to how it got into the system, as it were, because as you said, you, everybody on arrival um, get tested and are quarantined for 14 days in the initial phase. Uh, I think, John, there was a suggestion that the border with Cambodia might be a little more porous than uh, yeah. other points. 